Oh, let me start with the disappointment. Uh, I don't have a demo and I don't have anything in Databricks because this particular customer didn't use Databricks. I know it's hard to believe, but that is the hard truth. Uh, but I'll try to make up for this disappointment uh, with a story and I also promise you a picture of an alpaca at the end. So, um, I work at Data Insights for a consulting firm uh, based in Munich, Germany. Um, and what I'm going to present you today is uh, the metadata driven Spark processing framework, or as we called it, the framework uh, that we developed. Um, so probably you got asked often, oh, during quarantine, did you get any new, um, uh, new skills? Did you acquire any new skills, learn something new? And I tell people, well, not really, but I was building uh, ETL framework. So that's something. Um, and the question is why? So the problem we're facing is everyone's building pipelines, like many pipelines and you have to maintain them and so on. And um, why are they building it? Um, so you usually have different target types, like you want to write into Hadoop, you want to write into the Del Delta Lake, into an S3, Oracle, and so on. Uh, so you always have kind of different um, tar data tar targets and things. Um, you also have always different technologies that you're using, sometimes Spark, sometimes um, sp sp yeah, uh, all the other animals from uh, the uh, open source world. And uh, you also do it for different purposes. And what are, uh, how did we start our journey into building uh, a framework? that has minimum possible amount of pipelines. So regarding the target schema, so every time you want to create like a data warehouse or whatever data lake house or data, data lake, whatever you want to call it, uh, you have to model the data. And um, what we did is we made the choice to use data vault data model. I'll, if you never heard it, like I'll explain it shortly in a bit. And uh, what this enables us in short uh, is the data vault has only three kinds of tables, hubs, links, and, sat uh, and satellites. Uh, and that means you only need three pipelines. So uh, that's a win. Um, different target formats. We want to keep that flexible. Uh, you also want to keep flexible all the different sync formats uh, because you you can always switch from Delta Lake to just whatever else is next. Um, and uh, the, in terms of different technologies, we chose Spark because we want to handle also uh, big data and uh, there's different purposes. Well, you we can't really change that. So you also have to make some justific um, modifications for that. And okay, crash course on Data Vault. Um, in Data Vault, what you do uh, you have three types of tables, hubs, links, and satellites. What you do is in hubs, you put your business keys. So let's say you have a customer here, uh, business key of a customer. Uh, so their uh, whatever ID you have, uh, social security number, for example, is gonna go into a hub. And then all the other data about the customer is gonna live in the satellite. And then of course this customer is doing something, right? He's buying products, for example. Uh, the hubs uh, are gonna be connected with the links. So links are kind of like transactions and also these transactions can have their own data. So that's data vault for you, uh, very short. Um, and uh, you can see what is cool about the data vault is it already tells you, okay, this is the kind of tables you're gonna have. It also has inbuilt a uh, way you're gonna historize your data. Um, so uh, it makes some choices for you about which you later on, you don't have to think about. Um, and now how are we going to build this? So what are we trying to do here is, um, oh, we chose Spark with Don Scala uh, because it's cool. Uh, and we want to have uh, you know, type security and uh, all, all the nice um, Scala things. 
And uh, here we're going to have our uh, logic, uh, how to load the table in our data vault, which can reside in whatever uh, target. And we're going to read data from whatever source. Uh, in our uh, particular case, uh, we wanted to make it flexible to read either from Kafka or from uh, HDFS. Um, and of course, it, it, now you have your code. Imagine you have your uh, logic here. How you're going to configure this is with the metadata. And again, this metadata can, uh, oh, we can admit Kevin Wu. Uh, yeah, this metadata can reside, well, if you're unlucky in an Excel sheet, if you're a bit more lucky in a database, maybe in config files and so on. Um, right, so this is what we're building, but how, how are you going to build it? What we leveraged a lot, so for, for this part here, it's easy. For uh, source and target part, uh, it's less easy because you have to develop it for every source, but how you kind of keep it flexible. So we leverage a lot an abstract factory pattern. Um, so you just say uh, you create your consumer factory, uh, for example, that's going to read from some source. And what you tell to the consumer, uh, to the factory is, oh, I want one consumer, please. And it has to be for Kafka and he's going to be, okay, there you go. Uh, it's very important that uh, with abstract factory, you define an interface that's the same for all the consumers uh, because then you can always use them in the same way. And you just say, okay, I want one consumer for uh, HDFS and I want one producer for Oracle. Um, and it's uh, the framework is going to say, okay, let me give it to you. Uh, and the only thing you have to do now is you have to say, okay, now you producer uh, write uh, into the target using this consumer source. And that's in the end how your code looks like. Of course, there's a lot of ugly stuff behind the scenes, um, but uh, your, for example, but you have a clear separation of your logic. So the consumer contains or your extraction logic, the right to target method contains all the transformation logic and the producer contains all the loading logic. And the nice thing is you don't have to ever change transformation logic if you have new sources. Um, and in this way you can, it's just a matter of configuration and well, developing a new uh, consumer and new producer if you want to add more consumers and producers. Um, so to sum up, what is the recipe for the secret sauce is you want to have a good data model. Uh, why we chose data vault is because it makes some choice for us so that we don't have to think about it and uh, it gives us some uh, stability. Uh, a good data processing engine, so Spark. I um, don't know. I don't know if anyone has better idea. Um, good pinch of abstraction and turn nicely with lots of hard work. Um, and, well, pandemic kind of helped. There was not much else to do, and uh, feed it to your data. Um, and as promised, there is also a picture of Altaka. So um, I hope that makes up for the demo to some extent. Uh, maybe I can present you a demo in one year, uh, but currently I, I will blame the N NDA with a customer that I can't present it today. So uh, yeah, thank you for your attention and uh, yeah, uh, feel free to connect with me if you have more specific question about it. Uh, yeah, and have a nice last keynote of Data and AI Summit.